Hi everyone and welcome to QBranch's video on wiring your robot. This is Burdett and here we will go over the basics of how to make connections and some best practices with wiring terminals on your robot. Let's talk gauge of wire. In simple terms, the gauge of wire is related to the thickness. The smaller the number, the thicker the wire. In FRC we use wires with a gauge anywhere from simple lights with 18 to 22 gauge wire to motors with 12 or 14 gauge and the battery with 4 or 6 gauge wire. To explain the reasoning for using different gauge wires, you need to know how electricity works. As the charge moves through the wire, known as current, heat is then released. The greater the power of the device, the more electricity moving through the wire. With a thick wire, the electricity moves easily. But the same amount of electricity moving through a thin wire, there is a large amount of heat released due to resistance. As an analogy, there is a reason why some highways have six lanes while other roads are a single lane. The thicker the wire, the better it is for safety, but thicker wires are also heavy, cost prohibitive, and bulky. So there are trade-offs and always follow the FRC manual requirements. Now let's go over how to make the connections. Wires come covered in a protective coating which needs to be stripped on the ends to make the metal-to-metal -metal connection for electricity to transfer. There are two tools that we can use which are meant to strip wires. The first, which is found commonly in hardware stores, has many different slots for gauges of wire. So find the slot which best fits your wire, grip the wire about a quarter of an inch from the end, and wiggle the wire coating off of that end. If you're lucky enough to have the blue wire strippers like we do on 4327, then there is no need to find the gauge of wire. You can cut the wire to length using the cutting blades perpendicular to the tool. Your thumb goes on top to glide the top jaw while your fingers grip the bottom. To strip the wire, insert the wire about a quarter of an inch into the teeth at the tip and again slide your thumb toward the wire. This will work on wires up to about 12 gauge. If you want to strip the thick battery wires, you will want to either use a utility knife or a pair of scissors or something like that to carefully work the coating off. As a tip, you know your wire is stripped enough if you can make metal to metal connection and no wire is exposed on the other side. Exposed wire runs the risk of shorting out your bot with loose electricity and that's never a good thing. Now that your wire is stripped, let's connect a terminal. Depending on what you are doing, you may want a ring terminal, spade terminal, Anderson connector, or just plain solder. There are butt connectors, however, these commonly separate, so on 4327, we do not use these. Insert the exposed wire into the open end of the terminal until the end of the connector is at the edge of the coating on the wire. If there is some exposed wire, cut the wire to length as best you can, or use electrical tape to cover this when you are done crimping. Now for crimping. We're going to crimp the wire using a tooth crimper. Clamp down with the strength of 40 giants and release. Always test your connection by giving it a good tug. If the wire falls out, then start again. If the wire does not, then you're good to move on. Always perform a tug test because if you don't, then your robot will wait until the playoffs and do it for you mid-match. Anderson connectors are great as they are insulated terminals which are easy to connect together and look clean but they are more complicated to assemble. You will need a metal connector for your gauge wire, a red or black Anderson connector, and a special crimping tool seen here. Insert your stripped wire into the metal terminal and use a special crimping tool to secure the terminal. Like before, perform a tug test to be certain the terminal is secure. You may need to crimp a few times to get this right. Be sure the terminal is round in shape as this now needs to be fitted inside the red or black Anderson connector. As a tip, there are two metal wraps for the wire, a long one and a short one. Make sure no wires go past the middle wrap or else you will have trouble in the next part. Now insert the terminal into the Anderson connector until you hear a click. There is a characteristic snap of the connector to know you went the whole way. If the wire can wiggle inside the connector, like back and forth, then the terminal is not fully seated. If you cannot get the click to happen, 
then you likely fed too much wire into the metal terminal. Start over. When you have a pair of terminals assembled, then they are easy to connect together. Great job! If you, need, if you feel the need to solder, because either A, you ran out of terminals, B, they do not make a terminal for the gauge wire you are using, or C, you don't trust the terminals and your own crimping work, then you may want to solder the two ends together. To do this, you'll need a soldering iron and some lead-free solder. To solder, first strip the wires like before, then heat up your soldering iron by plugging it in the device. And some soldering irons have a variable temperature for different types of solder, but at Q Branch we have just one option. Hot! When using an iron, always be sure to have a stand of some kind to prop up the metal portion and never leave an iron unattended. When you're ready, somehow bring the two wires together. Good practice is to weave them together or intertwine them so the solder does not need to work as hard to hold the two segments together. Now you can either press the heated iron onto the connection and then gently drape the solder over the iron to melt onto the wire like we see here. Or place the iron underneath the wire and get the solder to drip down into it. The second method is preferred as the solder then gets deeper into the connection instead of remaining on the surface. However, this is not always possible, so do whatever is best for you. You can always test electrical connections without running power through the robot. To do this, grab a multimeter and turn it to the resistance setting. This is the one with the ohm symbol, which is the Greek letter omega. It looks like a horseshoe. Always test to make sure the multimeter is working first by connecting the red and black metal tips together. If the reading drops to near zero, like between 1 and 10, then all is good. Time to test. When you test between two points in your wiring, be sure to A, touch the metal tips of the multimeter to the metal of the wire, and B, avoid controllers or relays as they need to be activated for electricity to pass through. If your connection shows a resistance in the single digits of ohms, then you're good to go. If there's no reading, then there is no connection and you will need to check your connections. Finally, to route the wires. This is for aesthetics, but also helps during troubleshooting. When making an electrical system, you will want to follow the concept of making roads and not a bird's nest. Even, th even though more often than not, the route from point A to point B would be shorter by taking a direct route, your robot will look cleaner and easier to troubleshoot when stuff does not work by following common routes. So use zip ties to collect wires together and cut to length. Be sure to label each end of the PWM cables when wiring to trace issues during troubleshooting. A cleanly wired robot is something to take pride in and will certainly make a good impression on the judges. Now you know some basics about wiring. Go wire your robots. Always do your testing with the power off and be safe. Good luck.